go to the lesson uh, five today, okay? As usual, we have our Guru Parampara slogan, Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Sadashiva Samarambam, Sankara Charya Madhyabam, Asmat Acharya Paryantam, Vande Guru Paramparam. Okay, let's see what we did last session. We learnt about the first, second and third person Sanskrit words and different categories and classifications of verbs. I explained to you the summary of verb features. Also, how verbs are important. The karakas and sabdas. And I gave you some examples of how to use verbs. And we had a very nice verse and a concluding prayer. Okay, having said that, let's go to what we want to do today. We're going to just check the answers to last exercise. Thank you, Rishabh, for sending me your, your answers. Very good. You have you are done wonderful work. Accepting a small mistake in the last line, all your other answers are correct. I didn't get the exercises from Tudashani and Trinetrani. So you must do the exercise and send it to me. Okay? Oh, today. Our last class, we never came. Okay. I, you didn't attend last time, right, Trinetrani? So I sent you the, the video. So you should look at the video and see the exercise given there. And you have to do exercise because only then you can learn. Even if they make mistakes, it doesn't matter. Now, Rishabh sent in his exercise and uh, he's done very well, accepting one small mistake, but he has done all the others correct. So if you make mistake, doesn't matter, but uh, do the exercise. We're going to give the exercise at the end of this lesson too. Okay. We'll, we'll do it before next class. Yeah, okay. I'm going to give you the answers to the exercise so you know what is what. Correct the answers to the questions. It will give you a little experience on verb usage. And today, we are going to learn about nouns. We are going to learn the basics of nouns and I'm going to give you some examples and how the name ends. And I'm going to give you something called vibhakti. You will know what it is which examples and uh, more about uh, derived nouns. There are some proverbs without verb, which is very good in Sanskrit, amazing. And I'm going to teach you more words, vocabulary of nouns, so you know many, many new words in Sanskrit. And as you will get to have a nice verse with a concluding prayer. Okay. Let's go to the answers now. Aham pashyami. Very simple. Aham means I. Pashyami means I see. Very simple. Aham pashyami. When you see the me, it means I. I think I told you, when you get the ending as me, it means I. Aham pashyami. Aham badami. Aham kadami. You know, all these are ending in me. And me itself refers to I. Aham pashyami. In English also, you see me. I, when I refer myself, says, see me, right? So, me is uh, an indication that it is the first person, I. Twam. Twam tishtasi. Twam is referring to you. In Hindi, you call it tum, right? Twam tishtasi means you are standing or you stand. But there is a bit of difference. If you say you stand, it is like ordering somebody, you stand, you know. It's better you say you are standing because that is the real meaning. But in Sanskrit, Tvam Tushtasi itself means you are standing. There is no R there. Te Badanti 
I told you last time, if it is inti, it becomes plural. Te is also rhyming very well with English de. Only thing is, sounding is little different. Here you say te, and there it is te. So te vadanti. They are speaking. Tau smaravaha. I told you when it comes au, tau, it means two. It's a dual. So it becomes we two remember or we both remember. Both are correct. We two remember. Tau means referring to two people. In English, there is no difference between two and more. We means it can either mean two or it can mean more than two. But in Sanskrit, tau means two. We too remember. Tau smaravaha. Vayam hasamaha. Vayam refers to we. Hasamaha, we are laughing. Plural. Vayam, we. Okay? I am going to give you a very quick review of the verb for you to understand. You can take a printout if you like and then remember that. If you fix it on to your wall every day, you can look at it and remember that. This is a, it's a summary chart. Next one, as you see, is a summary chart. It's a review of verb usage. Aham, first person. Aham gachami means I go. Avam gachavaha means we too go too. Avam gachavaha. Gachavaha refers to two people. Vayam gachamaha. Vayam, I said, is we. Vayam gachamaha refers to plural. We go more than two. Tvam gachasi. You go. Yuvam gachataha. Yuvam refers to two again. Gachataha. You too go. Yuyam gachata. Yuyam means more than two. You go. In English, there is no difference. If you say you, it can mean one, one person or two person or more than two persons. But here in Sanskrit, it's very specific. It's aham, avam, vayam, yuvam means you. Yuyam, kachata, yuyam means plural. So, tvam, yuvam, yuyam. Third person, if you say saha gachati, he goes. Tau gachataha. Again, to tau gachataha, you too go, or they too go. Te gachanti, they go plural. Te go. Sa gachati refers to she. She goes. Te gachataha. Te gachataha, they too go. But feminine gender here, ta gachanti, plural. Te plural go. Tat gachati, tat is neutral gender. It goes. Like a car. Vahanaha gachati. Tat gachati. Te gachataha. They too go. Tani gachanti. Vahanani gachanti. Tani gachanti. They plural go. So this is kind of a master chart. You take a printout and you can fix it on your wall so you can remember every day in applying it. You know the big difference? The verb in English has only two simple forms, go and goes. But you see Sanskrit, how many are there? There are 15 verbs. They vary according to the person, first or second, third person, and the number, whether it is singular, dual, or plural. So there is a big difference between English and Sanskrit. So remember, Sanskrit is more specific. Okay? When you say gachanti itself, you mean more than two people are going. When you say gachataha, you know only two people are going. Okay. Let's go to noun basics. Now, what is a noun? A noun is to describe someone or something. Like, for example, people, places, all sorts of beings, animals too. It also mean qualities and more about things. Like you have 
the illustration here anita forest elephant phone these are all referring to various thing like people a place an animal and things so a noun refers to that it doesn't refer to action so noun basically has got two classifications in sanskrit one is called subantapada the words ending with su which is a suffix suffix means coming at the end the other one is called taddidapada words with special suffixes to get noun forms to be used as adjectives and other don't worry too much about the classification because this is only a classification according to grammar it is just to tell you that there are two different forms subantapada and taddidapada you don't have to worry too much about it because we are going to talk more about nouns let's see the next one i'm going to give you some examples now nouns the gender is important so also the gender is important for the verb for example if you say masculine gender ashwaha ashwaha means was horse giri giri refers to a mountain purushaha is a man likewise you see feminine genders chamu chamu refers to an army denu a cow kanya a girl now it is strange that chamu army is a feminine gender even though soldiers may not be if you take neuter gender we take a book for example a book is a new to gender pustakam madhu hani ambu is water they are all new to gender more examples noun ending now noun ending tells us its number whether it is singular or plural like you say rama ramas to say phone phones singular or plural fruit fruits tree trees likewise now the ending only tells you the number now its position related to the verb tells us who is the doer for example if you say the boy is running the dogs are chasing who is running the boy so the boy boy is a noun the dogs are chasing who's chasing the dogs so dogs become a noun so in sanskrit the noun ending tells the number as well as its role in the sentence it's a big difference now for example rama pashya rama pashya no rama means two i told you when it comes au it refers to two so two ramas the ramo pashya means look at two ramas look at two ramas no pashya ramas ramas ramo it tells the number ramo is looking at is also implied ramo pashya so it gives the number there are two ramas and what they are doing ramo is looking at lock looking at two ramas vayam ramena jeevamah now when you say ramena it implies by earlier we saw ramau which means at pashya is look at two ramas ramau here vayam ramena jeevamah means jeevamah vayam we live ramena means by rama so you see the role here by rama third lava kucha ramasya sutaha lava kucha are the children of rama 
When you say Ramasya, it means of Rama. So the noun Rama also defines here Ramasya means of Rama. In English, if you don't say of, it doesn't mean anything. But here when you say Ramasya, it means of, belonging to. Like Ramasya Patni Sita. Rama's wife is Sita. Ramasya automatically means Rama's of Rama. So it gives also the role of the subject. The number as well as soul both. We're going to see more of it now. Nouns and verbs. What is the difference? Both are similar in many ways. Both have a stem or a root which is never used by itself. If you say kru, it's a root. If you say krutaha, it means a verb, done. If you say karyam, which is derived from kru, means work. So kru by itself, it's not used, but it is used as a root or a stem to build up either a noun or a verb. And both add endings to the stem to create a word, both noun and verb. And both have three numbers and persons. Now, some qualities of nouns you can see. For example, bala. See, balaha kachati. When you say balaha, it means a boy. Gachati goes. Same bala, if you make bala instead of balaha, bala, it becomes a girl. Bala gachati means the girl goes. So here, the gender and the ending of the noun bala, they change, even though the verb is same gachati. But in English, you see the, verb, the noun itself has changed from boy to girl. Here, balaha, bala. It defines a boy and a girl. So what's the difference, right? Okay, how does the noun change? For example, gajaha, balam, Gachati. Gajaha means elephant. Gachati means goes. Balam means to the boy. Balam to the boy. So when you say Gajaha Balam Gachati, the elephant goes to the boy. So Balam itself means to the boy. Second one, you see, Gajaha Balena Gachati. Gajaha and Gachati are remaining the same. Gaja is elephant, Gachati goes. But Balena means goes with the boy. You see the difference? Gajaha Balena Gachati. Bala is a word referring to the boy. But Balena means goes with. When you say Bajaha Balena Gachati, the elephant goes with the boy. Third example Gajaha Balaya Gachati. Balaya means for the boy. The elephant goes for the boy. It might mean the elephant is going to attack the boy, goes for the boy. Gajaha Balaya Gachati. So you see the three differences. Balam, Balena, Balaya. Balam means to the boy. Balena means with the boy. And Balaya means for the boy. So the nouns, you see how they are working? They don't work the same way. The change in the noun form. Balam, Balena, Balaya, it's called a case. A case. Same noun, but working in different context. I'm going to give you more examples of this. It is called Vibhakti. The beauty of the Sanskrit case comes from Bhagam means to divide. Vibhagam is to divide or distribute. Vibhakti comes from that. 
Bhaga is to divide. Vibhaga is a noun to divide or distribute. Vibhakti is that which separates the meaning of the word. Though separation of the word meanings by vibhakti or the case endings is unique to Sanskrit. It is not found in any other language. But it is beautiful because it is very, very specific. Though it is very difficult for a beginner. Now, you see, I am going to give you some examples how the vibhakti works. Let's say two examples. Say Ramaha. It means one Rama. One Rama. Ramau. Wow. Au means two Ramas. Ramaha. Plural. Many Ramas. Ramaha. Ramau. Ramaha. Many Ramas. Another example is Ramasya means Ramas. I gave you example of Ramasya Patni Sitaha. Ramas wife is Sita. It means Rama of of Ramasya means of Rama. Sita is the wife of Rama. Ramasya. When you say Ramasya, automatically you don't have to put Ramas off. It means Ramas. But supposing there are two Ramas, supposing they have a common friend, let's say. Two Ramas friend. How do you say that? Ramayo ho mitraha. Ramayo ho. Means the friend of two Ramas. Rama Yoho. When you say Rama Yoho, it means automatically two Ramas. Of two Ramas. Only one word, Rama Yoho. But in English, we have three words. Of two Ramas. Similarly, supposing there are more Ramas. You, many Ramas have got one common friend. Like Hanuman, let's say. So you say then, Rama Nam Mitraha. Hanuman. Ramana means of many Ramas. The friend of many Ramas. Ramana. So the moment you say Ramana, it means of many Ramas. So you see, this is called a case where you have singular, dual, and plural. Three numbers. And the role of the noun is defined in the case. The first one, it is just only the number. Ramaha, Ramau, Ramaha. One Rama, two Ramas, multiple Ramas. Noun is same, Rama. Second case, it is Ramasya. One Rama, one Ramas. Ramas Patni. Ramas friend, one single Rama. Second, Rama Yoho, two. Friend of two Ramas, and you say Rama Yoho. Ramana means many Ramas, of many Ramas. So each set of this form is called a case. It's a form. And there are eight such cases, each having three forms singular, dual, and plural. So how many will you have totally? Eight into three which means 24 different forms or cases. And those cases are known as Vibhakti. That is called Vibhakti. Okay, now let's go further. I'm going to give you some examples of Vibhakti. Balaha Gachati. The boy is going. The question here is who? Who is going? The boy is going. So Balaha means... It means the boy is Balaha. Gachati is going. Second case, which is called accusative, which is basically referring to the object. Whom or what? Bala Pustakam Padati. The girl is reading the book. Girl is reading what? Pustakam. Balaha Pustakam Padati. 
So that becomes the kin who or what. Here it is Bala, which is the object here. In the earlier case, it was subject Balha Gachati, Bala Pustagam Patati. Third case, Mala Pushpaihi Bhavati. A garland is made using flowers. Using what? Question. With what? Or by what? So, mala pushpaihi, pushpaihi, with flowers. The flowers, that's an instrumental case, pushpaihi, babati. Fourth case, bhikshukayaha tandulam dehi, give rice to the beggar. Two, or for whom? Give rice to whom? To the beggar. Bichukayaha means to the beggar. Automatically it comes. Bichukayaha. One word for three English words to the beggar. To and for whom. Okay, that's the fourth case. Let's say it's the fifth case. It's called ablative case. Don't have to remember the names, but you know, you should know how these sentences are formed in Vibhaktis. Falani tarubhyaha patanti. Falani means fruits. Tarubhyaha, trees. Patanti, falling. From what? From where it is falling? Tarubhyaha. Tarubhyaha becomes ablative case. Abhyaha. Case six. Genitive case. It means whose? Question. Krishnasya Sahar, like Ramasya. Earlier we saw Ramasya, it is a case six, genitive. Whose? Krishnasya Saha, Krishna's, Krishna's friend. Ramasya Saha, Ramasya Brata, Rama's brother. Ramasya Brata, Rama's brother. Whose? That becomes case six. Case seven is called locative. Gajaha Aranye Sancharanti. Question is, where? Aranye, forest, in the forest. Aranye means in the forest. Gajaha kutra sancharanti, aranye sancharanti. Where do the elephants roam about? They roam in the forest. Roam in the forest. In the forest is de defined by aranye. Aranye, in, where? And last case is eight, which is called, like you call somebody, hey, like that, right? Here it is called vocative, hey, Ramaha, which means ho, Rama. If there are two Ramas, it says, hey, Rama. If there are multiple Ramas, you say, hey, Ramaha. So when you say, hey, Ramaha, it means you are addressing many, many Ramas. So these are the examples of Vibhakti you find. But how to pick a Vibhakti? No, that's difficult. Because it depends on what is the role of the noun. In a sentence, the number and gender of the noun. And the ending syllable of the noun. So Vibhakti is same for all Masculine gender, pullingaha, like for example, those which end in a, like Rama, Deva, Surya, Simma, Manusha, all these end in a, they are called akaranta. You also have akaranta, which is referring to feminine gender, like aparna, vidya, these are all ending in a. So they are feminine genders. You also have Ikaranta, like Kavi, Muni, Ravi, Rishi, Sarathi, and so on. They are called Ikaranta because they end in E. Likewise, you are Ukaranta. Those who end in U, like Guru. You call me Guru, Guru, Banu, Vishnu, Sadhu, all these end in U. So you have many such endings, like Ra, O, Cha, Cha, and so on. Okay, 
the vibhakti is same for all pullinga masculine words ending in iu okay i am going to give you some examples of vibhakti for akaranta pullinga ramaha see ramaha ramo ramaha which means one rama two ramas multiple ramas ramam ramo raman look at rama look at one rama look at two ramas look at many ramas ramena rama abhyam ramaihi which means by a single rama by two ramas and by multiple ramas and you want to do something to or for say ramaya ramaya pushpam poojayami it means you are doing puja for one rama ramaya pushpam poojayami rama abhyam rame pyaha is two ramas and multiple ramas okay more examples ramat rama abhyam rame pyaha again from a rama from two ramas and from multiple ramas ramasya ramayoho ramana i gave you this example before ramasya patni sita one ramayoho mitraha hanuman the friend of two ramas ramanam multiple ramas okay rame ramayoho rameshu in rama or in two ramas or in multiple ramas lastly he rama he ramo he ramaha he rama he ramas two ramas he ramaha multiple ramas now let's see how the nouns are derived nayanam refers to i nayanam ajanam means path or goal what you ties guide you right eyes are guiding you to a goal supposing you want to go to another room another room is your goal and the eyes are guiding you so it's called nayanam see this got meaning and from naya which means to lead the eyes are leading you the word comes naya shastra which means political science and polit politics means leaders the president the prime minister who are it they are leading raja they are connected with politics therefore called naya shastra you know dancing dancing you have abhinaya abhinaya it also from word nana with the an affix called abhi because you dance and you have those different actions which are lead led by your limbs it's called abhinaya vinaya vinaya means humility upanayana upanayanam you have you know they have the thread ceremony it's called upanayanam upanayana means lead near lead near a guru it's called upanayana so they are all derived from one bell root called naya likewise you have buddh buddha you know buddha he comes in the word buddh buddh means to know so buddha is one who knows who has knowledge likewise you have buddhi buddhi is knowledge intelligence to have bodhana means advice and you give somebody bauddha is buddhism anubodha is lesson all these from one root called buddh which means to know so roots are applied as a prefix or suffix to form nouns with different meanings okay now there are some proverbs where you don't have verb at all but they mean they give you full meaning durataha parvataha ramyaha durataha means at a distance parvataha means mountain ramyaha means beautiful the mountain looks beautiful from a distance athilobo vinashaya athilobo means lobo means greed athilobo means excess greed vinashaya lead to destruction you see there are only two words here athilobo vinashaya only two words 
whereas in english you got five words for that there is no verb athiloba vinasay there is no verb dravyena sarve vasha everyone gets attracted by wealth but there is no verb dravyena sarve vasha aropodeshe panditam para upadeshe means to teach others panditam is scholarship or knowledge you gain scholarship by teaching others vinasha kale viparita buddhihi two words only but if you translate in english it means the time of downfall a person's wisdom becomes dangerous viparita buddhihi so there all nice proverbs but there is no verb that's a beauty of sanskrit okay having said that now let's go and understand a few words ka kaha i think you all know it already ka kaha means crow avatha is air surya is referring to sun praja people or citizens netra netra also means i nayanam also means i netra also means i raja refers to a king phala fruit lekani refers to a pen gati a watch even in hindi you say gati pushpam you all know its flower parvata ha i mentioned earlier parvata mountains so remember these words now i'm going to give you a nice words it's a rhyming word and it is very simple i'm giving you this because you can understand how the grammar works here ka tvam bale ka tvam bale means who are you child ka means who tvam means you bale child who are you child and it's a girl who's answering and she tells her name she is kanchana mala now this is a verse of kalidasa who was a very famous poet so he composed these four lines which are very good to understand sanskrit ka tvam bale and the girl replies kanchana mala that's her name kanchana mala kasyam putri kasyam means who's ramayam sitayam automatically when you say kasyam means who's putri daughter when you say kasyam putri you don't find a verb there it means who is whose daughter or you kasyam putri means whose daughter are you only two words in sanskrit kasyam putri kanakalataya ha kanakalatayam her mother's name is kanakalata so she say kanakalatayam i am the daughter of kanakalata only one word kanakalatayam it means i am of kanakalata daughter of kanakalata kim te haste kim means what te means you are haste in your hands what is in your hands kim te haste tali patram you know in old, good old days they used to have a writing board or a leaf on which they used to write 
that is called tali patram tali patram she says kavam reka kavam means what reka means written she says kavam reka what is written on it and she says ka ka ga ga you know these are alphabets in sanskrit so she is probably young girl learning sanskrit so she says ka ka ga ga so it's a beautiful four line verse she says ka tum wale kanchana mala kasya putri kanakalathaya kimte haste tali patram kavam reka ka ka ga ga what is written on it is ka ka ga ga so it's a beautiful verse so let's go to the next one which is going to be the concluding prayer today this you know probably already om asato ma sadgamaya in your bhajans in your temple sometime you might have heard about it asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrit ಚೋರ್ಮೃತ ಕಮಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಅಸತೋಮ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅನ್ರೈಟಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಗೋ ಟು ರೈಟಸ್ನೆಸ್ ತಮಸೋಮ ತಮಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಲೀಡ್ ಮೀ ಇನ್ ಟು ಲೈಟ್ in other words from ignorance take me to enlightenment i want to learn more from darkness ignorance take me to the light or enlightenment mrityorma amritam gamaya from mortality to immortality being permanent eternal take me to that sprayer and ultimately you say om shanti 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 ki peace 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 so in our religion we believe in peace that is why you have this shanti okay now i am going to give you the exercises and going to be a simple test for you i have given you several words here with the english transliteration you have to say what is a number whether it is singular dual or plural and also the meaning right below each word so it is easy for you and send it across to me okay if it is singular you just put only s yes. if it is dual you put d or if it is plural you put p and write the meaning in english okay it's a very simple test and i'm going to give you a regular exercise too which means a little translation from sanskrit to english there are five five sentences very simple sentences i'm sure you'll find it very easy to translate and an exercise 4 where there are four english lines you need to translate it into english if you don't know how to write in devanagari write it in english doesn't matter okay this is going to be the homework for you for next week so with that i am going to end today's session and i'm going to unmute you so if you want to say something you can do so okay you are all unmuted now Um, can i take a picture of the slide before oh you want to see the slide before sure okay. yeah can you see it now yeah i just want to take a picture of it so you want to take a picture wonderful very nice with your cell phone mm, the tablet okay you will get my picture also <laughs> and behind me lord shiva's picture too
Yeah, I took the picture already. Okay, can you see the picture all right? It has come out okay? Yeah. All right, you want to take a picture of the exercise too? The yeah, I already took that one. Yeah, here it is. I already took take that one. Picture of this too. I already took yeah, that. Even you can do the same thing. Yeah, I already took the, both the pictures. Very good. Excellent. So easy for you. You can look at your cell phone and then work on that. Okay? All right. Rishabh, you have any questions? Anything to say? No. It was good. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm going to send you the video anyway. You can uh, take a look at it later on. Uh, but do practice these uh, lessons and uh, then uh, we'll meet again next Wednesday at uh, same time. Okay? Okay. All right. I'm going to end the meeting now. Bye and enjoy the day. All right? Thank you, Guruji. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.